first thing that we have to do is take some factory plastic off, take out our fuel tank, and get to our CVT cover, which is right here. So we start with this top piece between the seats. There are two screws, two large size rivets, and three small rivets right up here in the nose piece. So let's get to it. Then some of the smaller size rivets right up here in the nose piece of this front plastic. These you got to be a little more gentle with. Alright, once you remove the screws and rivets, I'm using aftermarket seat belts as you can tell. Uh, crow harnesses. After we move the rivets, we can pop this piece right out. Which exposes your dusty engine. <laughs> Alright, we're a step closer. Next thing we have to do is remove this plastic here. And on the Terex, before we can take out this front plastic here, we need to take out our cover of our tunnel. And if you haven't ever had that off before, it's kind of neat because that's where your drive shaft going to the front end is. And so your plumbing for your uh, coolant and that sort of thing. Also some wiring. Uh, after removing the cover for your tunnel here, we need to remove this uh, piece of plastic here. There is one screw in the front of this nose piece. Real easy to take off once you get the rivets out. All right, that is all the plastic that we need to remove to get this job done. The next thing we're going to be doing is removing this metal in the fuel tank, or the gas tank. It's uh, real easy to do. Here's where air tools are going to come in handy. Once the plastic's removed from the front, then it comes time to take off this stuff here where we can get the tank out and have clear access to the CVT. The only tools that you're going to need to do this are... Uh, Air tools really help, for one thing. Uh, you're going to need a 12 millimeter socket, a 14 millimeter socket, and a 14 millimeter wrench, and that's it. Let me start off taking these off. These are all 14. Everything was 14 so far, but this front bolt is a 12, so we just switched to 12. It's got a captured nut as well, like all the rest. Really easy. Okay, now, whew, check it out. One step closer. The cool th one of the cool things about the Terex that I find is that you only need about, you need a 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 millimeter metric wrenches and sockets and you can pretty much take apart just about anything. There are a few that require larger, but not many. Like the roll cage, like the bolts on the clutch, the driven pulley and the drive pulley. Hey, this uh, rear is where we need a 14 millimeter wrench and also a switch back to 14 millimeter socket on our ratchet. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet to undo your two straps that hold your gas tank. And where they're located is right underneath the side of the vehicle. Really easy to get to. I'm going to pull the main fuel line off the tank right here at the top. 
Again, it's got a little clamp here and these pliers on. And twist a little bit and it comes right off really easily. We put it higher than the fuel filter, it's not going to spill. Okay, now we're going to remove the tank. We can slide it a little bit forward. And then just take it right out. Now you can see the CVT cover itself down here. This is it. Your clutch is under here, or your drive pulley, your driven pulley is under here. It's got an intake that goes up to here that gets its air from right in front of the nose piece. I've seen some filters lately I've considered. Then on the rear of the CVT, there's an outlet for the air that goes down to where it'll, it'll uh, bubble under water and there's like a trap there to make sure water doesn't get in. First thing I have to do is remove this frame piece, but there are a couple things attached to it and they require a 10 millimeter wrench in the front and a 10 millimeter socket in the rear to remove. One of the, the first thing that I removed from this piece of uh, this bracket right here is the fuel system. It includes the coil, it looks like for the rear cylinder, the a fuel pump, potentially the fuel filter, and here's the inlet line from the tank. Yes, I can. What I'm going to do is I used a Sharpie marker the first time I removed it. I'll use one again here just to show which one's which. I'm going to put a plus on one and a dash on the other just so I know where they hook back up. So we'll take these off. Yes. I'm going to use a big wire tie to hold it out of the way. same time while I'm doing this I want to make sure that my, my fuel outlet hose is as high as possible to keep it from seeping fuel while I'm doing the rest of the job. Once you remove the fuel filter and uh, coil and everything bracket from the cross member you just swing it up front and out of the way. So you're done with that. The last thing you have to do is remove the carb heater grounding strap right here. It's also 10 millimeter. There are eight eight millimeter head size bolts that hold the CVT cover on. The wire that goes across the CVT cover conveniently has a uh, male female connector here in the center of it. So I'm going to pull it apart. Note to self: uh, remember to stick some dielectric grease in there when we put it back together. The air inlet for the CVT, as we've already talked about, is in the front of the machine between the front two seats and below the gear shifter. The outlet is actually right here. What this does is form a trap to keep water from coming into your CVT. You're going to need to, I've already done this before, it used to have two black straps on it. Okay, got it. Alright, we take that. Now once the wire tie is removed, we just lightly lift this up twist it a little bit and pull it off. We're taking out our last bolt holding the CVT cover on. Okay, it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get this off, but not that bad. And what we're going to do is just rotate this cover around the corner here and get it out of the way. Okay, check it out. There you have it. Your driven pulley and your drive pulley. As you can see, these are already marked from where I took it apart before. Uh, the driven pulley goes together a certain way. At, so does the drive pulley, which this is your clutch. And here's where we're going to put the new flyweight spring and our new clutch cap. What do you think ventilates better? That or this? Can't wait to put it on. This is getting more exciting by the minute.